Paul. Um, and last week, we talked about uh, Jesus who uh, teaches the saints to pray, teaches the, his uh, followers how to pray. They asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And we talked about, if you remember the beginning of that Sunday school lesson last week, about the degree of the saints' prayers. And that is, we talked about the asking and the seeking and the knocking. We talked about the asking being that honest, simple request that we may, at time to time, maybe maybe wouldn't even uh, go to our prayer closet or get along. We just maybe, maybe driving down the road and praying, Lord, I just ask that you give me safety on the way to this uh, to this destination that I'm going. A simple asking in prayer. And then we talked about the seeking in prayer. And that is that searching for God's answers. Like uh, like searching up, uh, maybe for job employment. Or, or searching about uh, you know God's direction. A specific thing with, with your family or what have you. So uh, we're searching God. It, it, it's a little bit of a longer and intensified prayer. Not that the other one is not. But... But, but a little more uh, just, Lord, I'm needing you here in, in some direction. Uh, and so I'm, I'm seeking you about this. I want to make sure that I'm doing exactly uh, what you want me to do and the way you want me to do it. And then we talked about the knocking in prayer. Because Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And that knocking in prayer is that, that very intensified, that deeply, uh, just uh, earnestly, um, just when you're, it seems like your whole being is just being knocking before the throne of God. Just maybe that would be something like cancer that's been uh, the news of cancer or a loved one that is uh, that is maybe going to arrive and you're just you're just Lord I'm begging you God you've got to intervene. You've got to touch. You've got to move or or you know or, or something uh, we see is catastrophic is going to happen. And so it's that knocking that that when truly and and uh, and you know the difference of those. You know when you just simply I'm sure we've all just had those simple asking in prayer. Just, uh, Lord, I, I ask you to bless our day today. And then those seeking, Lord, I need to know, do you want us to, to, to do this, to be a part of this? And then that knocking, God, oh God, with tears and our hearts are being poured out, uh, like poured out of a, a face. Just, Lord, I'm begging you now, please move. Please, like, uh, so we pray for your husband and pray for him to come to church and his soul to be saved, that he's not... Uh, never, that we, as far as we know, came to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is a knocking. That is an earnestly pouring out, God, please move in a mighty way. Yes. This morning, we're going to talk about something that none of us like to practice. <laughs> but everybody that's peep that are that are saved ought to practice it. And that is Jesus teaches us on fasting. And let's take our Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 17 this morning. Matthew chapter number 17 today, if you would. In Matthew chapter 17, and I, I'm not going to make light about fasting too much because I want to be honest with you, fasting is very vital and important. And it's something that as the people of God, that is a practice that, uh, that has in, in many places, many churches been forgotten and forsook, but it's in the Bible. And it's something that we ought to, as the people of God, practice um, in our walk with the Lord. Um, Matthew chapter 17. And we're going to look today about fasting. Now I'm not going to teach all about fasting and look at the Old Testament. Fasting and why they fasted about certain things and so forth. But we are going to learn today and get an idea of what fasting is. In Matthew chapter 17. I want you to look with me beginning with verse number um, 14. Okay? Okay. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a, a lunatic, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oft the times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples. Now, here again, we know what the disciples are, those that have been following Jesus in his ministry. And the Bible says, And they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Now, truly, we see a miracle in which Jesus performs here. 
But I want you to notice with me that they that this man brought his son uh, who was possessed to the disciples, the followers of Christ, those who who had been with Jesus in his ministry, following and listening to his teachings and practicing them uh, as best as they could. But this one area, and Jesus and Jesus lets them know now what this area is. Let's look at it in verse number 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Has there ever been a time in your life when you have maybe uh, someone came to you about something and you prayed about it and it just seemed like it didn't go through and you wondered, God, why could this not be? Why could this not be? And uh, look, look at what it says here. Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto him, unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, that if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Then he talks about, now, so um, 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 I want to, kind of love leading up to what we're going to talk about today, but I want you to see this. So, fasting is a part of faith. Fasting to fast is to have faith. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in, in our lesson today, but I want you to see here that it takes faith to fast. And um, and we see something here uh, in the next part. It says, uh, he says, nothing shall be impossible unto you, verse 21, how be it? In other words, however, notice this, this kind, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So we talked about praying last week. This week we're going to talk about the fasting. In the Hebrew culture, to fast is to simply to cover one's mouth. But fasting is far more than just um, than just not eating. It's more than just the absence of food. Uh, fasting is so much more than that. And I want to give you, I, I, I think I've got at least... Uh, let's see. Well, I got ten things. Woo. I didn't realize I had that many, but I've got ten things this morning that I want to talk to you about what fasting is, and it's not going to. It's going to go pretty quick, I believe. But first of all, there's so many things, but I don't want to get on every little thing. I just want to give you the general uh, good grasp on fasting this morning and the importance of it, uh, why you and I should fast, not just for health reasons, uh, but for the spiritual things. For number one. Bringing phys fasting brings our physical bodies into a place of subjection that the Spirit might rule in you and I. Yeah. So fasting is bringing our physical bodies into subjection. Listen, our bodies want to rule. Our flesh is our one of our truly our biggest enemy. It gets in the way so much of the time. We've got to learn to bring our physical bodies into subjection. By the way, let me say this. If we learn to fast in food, to say no to a meal, that will help us in saying no to maybe then we go to Walmart to get one item and walk out getting ten. How many of you have ever done that? I have. I do that. And, uh, you know, I only went in to get one item and walk out with ten. But if we learn, why? Because you can't satisfy this flesh. You've got to learn to, su to, to suppress it. You've got to learn to overcome it. To, and fasting helps us do that. So it brings the physical body into subjection that the spirit might rule. Take your Bibles and go with me to 1 Corinthians for a moment. And let's just look at some look at verses on these certain things that I want to bring forth for you today about fasting. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, and we're going to look at verse number 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the fasting is not mentioned here, but nonetheless I want you to see where Paul talks about this running of a race for the Christian life. He says in verse number 24, he says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Now, this is the part I want you to see in, 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 light, in light with fasting. And everyone that striveth for the mastery is temperate, that is, who strives to be the best, is balanced in all things. In other words, he is going to have to have his flesh in, in, in some restraint upon him. He's going to have to have his body, his desires, his appetites of his flesh have to be 
suppressed. They have to be because otherwise they'll control, they'll rule, they'll reign, okay? And he says, it's temperate in all things. No, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, certain, certainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body. You see that? I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others on myself, should be a cast away. So, when you and I, when we want to make our body subject, we want to make it subject so that we are governed by the Spirit of the Lord. We want to suppress it. We want to. We want that appetite to not rule and reign in our bodies. We want Christ to rule and reign in our bodies. And one way to do that is to keep this body in subjection. To not let it have everything it wants. It can have it, but should it have it? If I hold it back, in the long run, it helps me. It helps me. Not just physically, but spiritually. Let me say this this morning. Dieting takes character... But fasting takes conviction. Fasting takes conviction. And you and I ought to have the conviction in our hearts that we want to, we want God to rule and reign in our bodies. In our hearts, but in our bodies, have His way in our bodies. And so therefore, uh, fasting is a way that you and I can do that. Galatians chapter 5. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look here. At verse at what is known as the fruit of the spirit, verse number twenty-two and twenty-three. Notice what it says, and I want you to see and think about these verses in the light of fasting. It says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law." Now, this is the fruit of the spirit. But how can someone who is not subject to the spirit bear this fruit? He or she cannot. So we must be subject. We must, we must oppress this, uh, these uh, appetites that we have if the Spirit of God is going to rule and reign in our hearts and in our bodies. Number two, not only does it bring, phys uh, bring the physical body into subjection, which allows the Spirit of God to rule in our hearts, but it also denies ourselves and acknowledges God. When you and I are fasting... We are denying ourselves. We are denying. We are. We are not allowing ourselves to eat. Look, there may be food in the fridge, but to say no to it is denying of myself. I have a right to the fridge. I have a right to what's in there. But if I deny it, I'm denying myself, and I'm acknowledging God. Now, and we're going to get into more about this a little bit, but, but I'm going to get too ahead of myself. But fasting is primarily that spiritual thing that you and I are to do. It's, it's, more, it's more spiritual, as far as biblical, what we're looking at this morning, than it is the physical. Now, it is physical, but it's in light of what we're talking about today, it's more spiritual than the physical. It's not for our health so much as it is for our spirit, okay, to be subject unto God and for God to go and to acknowledge God. Abstinence alone is not fulfilling biblical fasting. Jesus wanted the disciples, and he talks about it there in the book of Matthew and other places, he wanted them in the place of fasting, in the place of eating, I should say, to seek the face of God. He, remember what Jesus said to Peter and to the disciples? What could you not watch with me for one hour? Could you not, could you not, could you not watch with me? Could you not just spend some time with me in prayer? Jesus said, look, what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, Peter, Satan have desire to sift you, but I have prayed for you. Prayed for you. And look, uh, look, you and I, fasting, biblical fasting, ought to take some time when we would normally eat, maybe eat a meal, And because fasting is not just the absence of eating, but it's also what we do in the place of eating, is instead of eating, I'm going to take that time and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray about that unspoken request. I'm going to pray about, about my cancer. I'm going to pray about uh, this loved one that needs to get saved. I'm going to pray. It's spending. That's what, that's what God wants us to do. It's, it's to deny ourselves those pleasures, those, those things that, uh, that uh, appetites that are of our flesh, and in that time frame, not just not doing, just like separation. Separation, biblical separation, is not just not doing wrong, but it's doing right in the place of it. It's just, it's not that I, it's not, it's more than just 
I don't drink anymore, but that I read my Bible now. You know, it's, it's more than just uh, than just I don't smoke, but it's uh, that but it's that I pray and talk to God and I come to church. So it's at, coming out is more than just separation. It's more than just uh, not coming out from something and not doing it, but it's doing something in the place of it. Doing seeking God in the things of God. Same thing with fasting. It's not just not eating a meal, but it's in the place of it, spending time with God. Getting in touch with God. Acknowledging God in my life and in my heart. Are you with me so far this morning? Okay. So I want you to understand today that biblical fasting, what is fasting? It's bringing my physical body into subjection that the Spirit might rule in me. It's denying myself and to do so is to, in the place of acknowledging God and the importance of having God in my heart and in my life. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. In Mark chapter 8 and in verse number 34 this morning. Verse number 34. And when he had called the, the, the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him, here it is, deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, I just want you to see that where Jesus says, Whosoever will come after me. Whosoever is going to seek me, let him deny himself. And fasting is a way that we deny ourselves the appetites of our flesh and we come apart for just a little while. I'm not saying, look, even Jesus fasted. Remember in the wilderness? He fasted before he was tempted. And, and, and I'm going to talk about all that, but I'm just want, we could. Um, maybe we will next week. I don't know. We'll see. But I want you to see today about how that it's important. Jesus is our example in everything. And Jesus took time and, and, and saw it important and taught in, in, his, in his own life and practice of fasting, you and I also. Because listen, and I want to get ahead of myself. I keep trying to get ahead of myself, but I don't want to get there yet. Or what I want to lead up to toward the end. But I want you to understand, fasting is important. It is important. Just like reading your Bible is important. Just like coming to church is important. Just like praying is important. Fasting is important. Every child of God ought to practice this thing of fasting. I try to do it, to practice it in my own life. I'm not perfect at it, um, but I try to do it as well, and I've practiced it in my own life. And, uh, and But anyway, I want you to, to, to learn this about fasting because I believe it opens up a new uh, avenue for you in, 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 in the Christian walk. In fasting, I am denying my flesh. And that flesh of my wars against God and His indwelling spirit. It, there's a constant conflict. Paul talked about that in the book of Romans chapter 7. He talked about that conflict between the inner and the outer. And that is the old flesh and then Christ in Him through the Spirit of God. And so you and I have that conflict this morning. And so we need to learn to, 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 to suppress our appetites. Number three. Number three. Fasting makes the old man weak in order that the new man may be strong. Fasting makes the old man weak in that the new man may be made strong. You see, the more I weaken my flesh, the more dependent I become upon God. You know, the people that, uh, as long as I see myself strong and feel myself strong within myself, I'm not, this is face it's not, we're not going to realize truly how dependent we are upon God. But when you and I get weak, when we get that, I mean, we see this all the time. You know, as long as things are going good, sometimes people will get away from church. But then all of a sudden, they see things begin to fall apart. They see themselves begin to get weak, and then they come back to church, and uh, and, and they're good to do, and they're glad to do so for a little while until things get good, good again, and then they get out. Listen, we ought to be in church, no matter what. First of all, not for Satan assembling ourselves together, but I want you to see this: that we need to understand that who we are is dependent upon God. He's the one that enables us. And so, one way, fasting weakens our flesh, which enables the man of Christ in us to be strong, to see him strong. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul kind of talked about this here 
in the dealings of his thorn that was in his flesh and how that uh, the messenger uh, of Satan uh, bruised him uh, lest he should be exalted above measure and uh, and uh, he sought the Lord three times concerning it we, we see that in scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 but I want you to notice in verse number 10 notice verse 10 the Bible says therefore I take pleasure in what? in infirmities you see that? in reproaches in, nece in necessities in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake notice what he says here here it is for when I am weak what? then am I strong that is listen the power of Christ in him is revealed when he is weak listen we've got to get out of the way I must decrease he must increase so it's a getting of self out of the way and fasting is a way that you and I get self out of the way it's, it's a way that we cover them off we cover them out we suppress those appetites in a way that God you must be strong in my life not my strength but your strength I'm not relying upon my uh, my uh, resources but your resources God you see that so it's it makes the old man weak fasting does and makes the new man Christ in you strong number four it denies the human will to fulfill God's will fasting will deny the human will human will is I want to eat I don't know about you but I like McDonald's I love their fries I'm telling you what, I hope they never do anything to their fries. <laughs> now, I, I like Evan Bearman to Polaris Mall, but have you ever had a flip burger at Polaris Mall? They're good. I recommend them. Bacon, bacon burger, the big, oh man, they're so good. I love those things. But their fries, me. But I tell you what, but what is it? I said, talking about fast. Yeah, I know. But, but see, it makes you hungry. And there you go. And so, but I mean, you get, you know, you get all those, I mean, all those juices. I mean, you know, let's get real. It doesn't get better than McDonald's fries. It just doesn't get better. I mean, to me. I mean, I love McDonald's fries. But you know, I heard a preacher one time say that when he would eat, you know, one fry at a time, I never got there. I cannot do that. I'm telling you. I mean, it, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like the crane coming down. I mean, you know, that's me eating the McDonald's fry. You know, I can't do the one at a fry thing. I'm, I can't, I'll be honest. But fasting will help you to deny the human will. The human will says, I want that. In order to fulfill God's will. To take some time to get along and pray about a situation and say, God, I'm seeking you about this about this request. I'm knocking at your throne of grace about this specific need. Uh, John chapter 4, let's look there this morning. In the Gospel of John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, and let's look at verse 31. John 4 verse 31. Here we see where Jesus is um, denying his human will because Jesus was 100% man, but Jesus was also 100% God. And we see in this text where Jesus is denying his human will in order to fulfill the will of the Father. Let's look at it. John chapter 4, look at verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. They were urging him to eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him all to eat? And Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Here we see where Jesus, while all the disciples are around, all everybody else is eating, and they're saying, Master, you need to eat. You need to get your strength up. You need to eat. You need to be replenished physically. And Jesus says, I'm denying my human will that I may fulfill the will of my Father which is in heaven. This morning, you and I, from time to time, from time to time, there are some things that we are praying about that maybe we should come apart and deny our human will 
for a little while in order to find God's divine will and to do God's divine will and to have God's divine will come forward. And so it denies the human will to fulfill God's will. Number five, fasting helps us lose touch with the world. Fasting helps us to come out and lose touch with the world. Listen, we're so in touch with the world, we can't help it. We're in the world. You know, the world's all around us. Fasting is an opportunity to bring us apart from the world, circle a little while, and get in touch with just us and God. Let's see that this morning. Take your Bibles, if you would, and go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 with me this morning. Galatians chapter 5. Fasting helps us lose touch with the world. In Galatians chapter 5 and in verse number 17. Listen to what the scripture says here. For the flesh, and we know what that is, amen, we all got it. It lusted, okay? It, it's, it wars against uh, the, the spirit. That's the capital S. That's the Holy Spirit of God that lives within us. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. There's this constant conflict, a constant battle. Paul talked about it in Romans 7. There's this, there's this lusting here of, 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 of it's contrary, this, this battle going on between the Spirit and our flesh. And when you and I fast, we are, we are losing touch with the world. We are coming apart with the world for a little while, and we are in that moment seeking God and denying, suppressing our desires, our appetites. This enables God to rule and reign in our hearts and in our bodies as well, and uh, to where to where it is we're making it subject unto Him. Romans chapter eight. In Romans chapter eight, and in verse number, in verse number four. Uh, Romans 8, verse number 4. The Bible says this right here. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want you to see that this morning. Did you, did you see that? That that they that are after the flesh, do you mind the things of the flesh? So, listen, what is the things of the flesh? To eat. It's within us all to eat. You know, three times a day. And, you know, by the time it comes around, the stomach starts growling a certain time. And it's like, man, it's time to eat. And we better eat. What's, what's, what's to eat? You know, and you, I mean, you start looking like a, you know, like a bear getting ready for hibernation. And you're like ready to tear everything up to find something uh, to eat. And you're snacking while you're cooking. <laughs> And uh, I'm guilty. I've done that before. Snacking while I'm cooking. And all those things. But listen. Fasting. Fasting. What does that do? That helps me. Listen. That helps me to, to lose touch with the world for just a little while. To lose touch with, with that natural thing that's just my flesh. And that wants to take over. It wants to rule. It wants to reign. The fasting pulls it all back in. And gets my focus back to Christ. Where it needs to be at that moment. And, uh, and keeping my body into subjection. So. So, so far, let me give you just a recap. We've talked about what does fasting do? What is fasting? It brings the physical body into subjection that the spirit might rule in me. It denies self and acknowledges God. It makes the old man weak in order to make the new man strong. Fasting denies the human will to fulfill God's will. Fasting helps us to lose touch with the world for that time frame in which we're seeking Him at that moment. And number six, fasting is forfeiting the temporal to gain the eternal. Fasting, fasting is forfeiting the temporal in order that we may gain the eternal. Yeah. Take your Bibles and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> 2 Corinthians this morning, chapter 4. You see this morning, in the case of fasting, the outward man, he perishes by starvation. He's, he's hungry. Now, he's not, we're physically not going to die because we skip a meal, amen, but, but we may think that we are, but we're not. 
But in the case of fasting, the outward man, he is he is perishing in that he is we are weakening him by by not by not by starving, by not feeding that appetite that we have at that moment. But the inward man at that same moment directs his focus to the things that are eternal. And by that, his spirit, the spirit of God within him, in, in touch with his spirit, is strengthened. And now, just like Paul said, remember we looked at it a while ago, how that he said, when I am weak, then am I strong? So we see this here. Look at your Bible, 2 Corinthians 4, let's look at verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Did you see that? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what, church? Are eternal. Those things which are not seen are eternal. And when you and I, when we, in the case of fasting, now in light of fasting, when we starve that outward man, we are putting our attention not on the outward, but on the inward. We're putting our focus on the things that we cannot see, the things of God. Are you with me so far? Did I lose anybody this morning? Okay. So I want you to see this morning that fasting does a lot. It does a lot for you and I when we take time to set apart and fast. By the way, we preach on prayer, we preach on Bible reading, we preach on church attendance, we preach on sharing our faith. But you know what? We need to preach on fasting because Jesus said this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. So fasting is a necessity just like reading your Bible is, just like praying is, just like coming to church is, just like sharing your faith is. It's a part of the Christian life. At least it ought to be. Every one of us ought to spend some time uh, uh, whether it's once a week or once a month or whatever, every one of us ought to spend some time and come apart and fast. And that doesn't mean just to suppress and not just feed our mouths uh, or feed our flesh, but it also means just like separation. It doesn't mean just come apart, but it means come unto. It's not just the absence of food, but it's the presence of God. I'm seeking you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I want you, God. And I'm acknowledging you. And I'm coming to you knocking, seeking, asking in prayer. Let's look at number number seven. I told you I had ten things. Number seven. Fasting is to abstain the natural in order to gain the supernatural. Fasting abstains from the nat abstains the natural is to abstain the natural and to gain the supernatural. Look at Matthew chapter 17. I want you to see that with me. I just mentioned it, and I want you to see it in the scripture. Because I want you to get, I don't want you to take this lesson and go, well, that's not important or applicable for me today. Fasting is just as applicable for you to I today as reading our Bibles is today. It's, a, it, it, it's just as applicable as anything else that we teach and preach from this pulpit. Fasting is to abstain the natural to gain the supernatural. Matthew 17, look at verse number 21. Listen to what Jesus said to the disciples, the followers of the teachings of Jesus. Listen to what he just listen to what he says to them now. He says, How be it? Next two words, church, this kind, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So it's not enough that you pray, but you must pray and fast. That is that that is the denying of self to coming out into out of touch with the world and truly pouring oneself out and seeking me with prayer and fasting, this supernatural can happen. The supernatural, what happened? Jesus was able to uh, uh, to to uh, to uh, relieve uh, this uh, this son of this demonic oppression. And this morning, you and I can obtain the supernatural by prayer and fasting to be able to see the hand of God in our life supernaturally, to see the working and the moving hand of God in our life. How many of you want to see God work in your life? Amen. I do this morning. I sure do. Fasting, number eight, is preparation for the spiritual warfare. Fasting is preparation for the spiritual warfare. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Listen, the greater the temptation that faces you ahead, the greater the need that you and I have to break the will of our old flesh. The greater the need of the temptation that lies ahead, the greater the need of you and I to break the will of our own flesh. 
Our own flesh is going to hinder us. Our own flesh gets in the way. The greatest enemy you and I have this morning uh, outside of the devil is our own flesh. We've got to learn to suppress. We've got to learn to push down those appetites. And one way to do that is by the way of fasting. Fasting uh, fasting is preparation for the spiritual warfare. Look at Matthew chapter 4. Here we see in verse number 1, Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So Jesus is getting ready to be tempted by the devil. Lucifer himself. And notice what he says. He's going to the wilderness in verse number 2. And when he had, what's the next word? Fasted. What did Jesus do? He fasted. Jesus fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, and he was afterward and hunger. Jesus did not eat for 40 days and for 40 nights. Jesus fasted. Fasting is preparation for spiritual warfare. When you and I, listen, there's, there's too much. Listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against those powers of the air that are all around us. And you and I, we need to spend time uh, separating from, from the table for a little while and getting in the closets for a little while and seeking the face of God that the power of Christ may rest upon us and that we are not overcome because Satan has surely desired to sift you and I and our marriages, our testimony, our church as we to sift this week. And you and I need to make sure this morning that we have done everything we can, have the spiritual armor and the welfare, warfare ready to go when the attack comes. Fasting is preparation for spiritual warfare. Number nine, number nine this morning, fasting increases faith to see Him who is invisible. Fasting increases our faith to see Him who is invisible. And uh, Mark chapter number nine, the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. I've got just one more point and I'll be done this morning. So I'm almost done. We'll be done on time today, I believe. Amen. Praise God. Mark chapter 9. Fasting increases our faith to see Him who is invisible. Mark chapter number 9. Verse number 17. And one of the multitudes answered and said, Master, I have brought, un uh, brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and, and, and uh, pinneth, pinneth away. And, and I spake to thy disciples that, that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him, and, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And uh, they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, he straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, well, How long is it? Uh, is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Oftentimes he is cast into the fire and into the waters and to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Here we see this outward plea and cry of this father for his son and for the healing of his son. He wants to see the touch of God. He wants to see him who is invisible, whom he cannot see. I want you to skip down with me. Now, Jesus uh, 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 cast out that uh, uh, the dumb and deaf spirit. I charge thee to come out of him in verse 25. And, uh, and Jesus touches him because they think that he's dead. In verse number 26, 27, he lifts up the young man, the lad. But then I want you to ski down to verse 29. Then Jesus says to those watching, and, and here again, speaking to our, those disciples, this kind in verse 29. This kind, this seeing him who is invisible can come forth by nothing. And I want you to see that. That's important words. Every word is important in the Bible. By nothing, but by prayer and fasting. I simply want you to see this morning, fasting increases our faith to see him who is invisible. And then number 10, and I'm done. The tenth thing, why? Tenth thing I want to give you this morning. Why? What is fasting? And, and, and truly, Jesus taught the disciples about fasting. Because he said to them, this kind of comes only by prayer and fasting. Fasting, number ten, is turning unto God. That's simply put. Fasting is turning unto God. Take your Bibles this morning and go to the book of Joel. The book of Joel, 
chapter 2 this morning. The book of Joel, chapter 2 today. Fasting is turning unto God. When you and I take a moment, maybe a, maybe a lunch break once a week, or maybe once a month, uh, you could do it, uh, you know, just uh, uh, maybe a breakfast or skip a supper or meal or but just come apart. And just, not just don't eat, but in that time frame of when you would normally eat, just get along with God. And just take some time and pray, seeking and knocking about those things that are a burden on your heart, your health, your children, your spouse, your job, your finances. And just begin to pray. And seek the face of God. Look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Look at verse 12. Here it is and I'm done. Therefore also, therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Fasting truly is a, a part of a broken heart. A lot of times we fast because there's some mourning involved, there's some grieving of, of our hearts. And truly, fasting turns us to God, our faces to God. Saying, God, except you touch, except you intervene, there will be no, there will be no deliverance. We need you in this. We need you in our marriage. We need you in our ministry. We need you in every area of our life. This morning, Jesus teaches on fasting. May you and I be a church that are the disciples of Christ, following Him in all of His teachings. And part of that is fasting. May we, as God leads us, may we prayerfully consider a time. When could we set that time apart, that meal, Pull ourselves away from, push ourselves away from the table, and, 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 and seek the face of God, and expect Him to see the face of God, for we have obeyed the Word. Father, thank you this morning for this Sunday school lesson. Thank you for these that came today for Sunday school. I pray a special blessing on each and every one. And Father God, I pray now that you will move in a mighty way in our main service today. Be glorified, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you so much.